Welcome to episode 50 of the Rescued by Dragons fantasy fiction podcast, Tales of the Brunch Club. Thank you for those of you who have supported us so far. My name is Brian Mesmer, and I'm not only your storyteller, but the dungeon master behind the homebrew Dungeons & Dragons campaign this adventure is based on. Please join me as I tell the tale of how my players and the dice ruined and improved my perfectly laid plans. But first, a quick recap. The Brunch Club continued their journey to the Fey Touchpoint, searching for a place to rest in the mountains. During their search, Alora spotted a cave, which the party decided to investigate. The cave stank, and they could hear a faint rumbling noise from within. Diesa scouted ahead, entering a cavern laden with treasures, most notably an enormous greatsword. She attempted to creep back to the others to report her findings, but knocked an icicle across the cavern. The creature she had spotted remained asleep, but a larger beast arose from deep within the cavern, immediately paralyzing Diesa with its chilling gaze. Although frozen, she was able to release a strained, desperate yell for help. On Alora's command, Sam ran into the cavern to find Diesa being slashed by a giant wendigo, and soon the remaining members of the brunch club raced in to her rescue. They made quick work of disposing the two monsters, and were able to save Diesa from a close brush with death. After a brief rest, they then pressed onwards into the mountains, eventually coming across an encampment with four Ettons waiting around a fire. To avoid confrontation, they decided to climb a steep hill in the distance that led to a flat, snowy plateau. The party may have been able to successfully evade the Ettons, but they instead found themselves face to face with the giant Bahir. And now, episode 50. How do you like your eggs? The Bahir hissed. The huge reptilian creature was electric blue with shining gradient scales. Its enormous tail swung weightily back and forth, and it bore long, sharp fangs. An electric current seemed to surround the creature. "'Imminent danger!' shouted Sam, as his new companions took a ready stance. Alora quickly set one of her arrows aflame and shot it at the enormous creature. The arrow blazed past Sam, glancing off the Bahir's scales with little effect. "'Is it too late to go back to the Ettons?' Joy asked, as Diesa drew her crossbow and shot it at the Bahir, sinking a bolt into its chest. The Bahir hissed, but seemed altogether unaffected by the attack. "'I guess so,' moaned Jory, reaching for his darts. Reacting quickly, Salas and Drusilla began to bring their magical abilities to bear. Drusilla's brow furrowed as she muttered an incantation, blessing herself, Diesa, and Salas. Salas glanced up at her elvish companion in gratitude as her hands began to glow. Raising her hands before her, a green blast emanated from her fingertips, the bright sphere blasting toward the reptilious foe. To her dismay, the blast flew wayward, missing the Bahir and exploding into a distant snowdrift. Alora steadied her bow once again, taking aim at the Bahir and loosing an arrow. Despite the sheer magnitude of the target, the arrow's fate was similar to that of Salas's chromatic orb. It flew to the side, missing the Bahir and burying itself deep into the snow. Danger! cried Sam as he leapt at the Bahir. The robot grappled for a hold on its scales, and with a heave propelled himself onto the giant creature's rearing back. Please stop moving, he muttered as he scaled up the Bahir's neck, getting as close as he could to its head. Despite the Bahir's lack of cooperation, he was able to steady himself. With two hands holding the neck of the beast, Sam used another of his two hands to grasp the greatsword. He swung, aiming for its left eye. As he swung, the Bahir thrashed his neck, throwing Sam off balance and thwarting his attack. The robot holding onto its neck seemed to disturb the giant beast, and it continued to throw its neck back and forth, trying to dismount its rider. Using his distraction to their advantage, the grounded members of the party rushed to attack. Diesa quickly drew Diesa quickly drew her battle axe, charging at the Bahir's hind legs. She swung, but as she did, the Bahir shifted its stance. Diesa lurched forward, and her axe sank into the snow. Sala shot another green magical blast at the Bahir, which missed and dissipated into the air. Drusilla shot a bolt of radiant light from her fingertips, which shot through the air at the Bahir. On impact, the beast unleashed a piercing shriek and thrashed again. Sam clung tightly to its neck, his metallic frame clanging against the beast's hard scales. Jory charged at the Bahir, zigzagging toward his target. As he ran, he seemed to evaluate the flow of energy coursing through the Bahir's body. 
and he quickly struck several of the Bahir's pressure points. But he wavered. Just millimeters off target, he missed two of his three strikes. Take this, he shouted, landing the fourth strike. Joy's pointer finger dug into a pressure point with deadly decision. The Bahir was stunned by the blow. Quick to identify his opportunity, Sam rose his greatsword above his head once more, driving the blade deep into the eye of the beast. Blood exploded from its eye socket, staining the snow beneath the Bahir. Moments later, an arrow sunk into the creature's neck. Sam looked briefly down at the arrow and back toward Alora. Your talent moves me, the robot shouted mechanically as Alora reached for another arrow. From behind Alora, Salah sent a magical blast of darts at the Bahir, which erupted as they made contact with its scales. At long last, the Bahir was beginning to look rough. The electrical current surrounding the creature seemed weakened, and its scales cracked in several places. The Bahir's eye socket continued to ooze. Joy attempted to steady himself, charging at the Bahir. He swung several times at the Bahir's hind quarters, but they seemed to have little effect. The time-hardened scales proved difficult to get through. What the hell? Joy exclaimed, angered by his missed opportunity for glory. Exasperated, he retrieved his boda bag from his satchel, taking a giant swig. As he drank, he angrily swung his free arm at the Bahir's butt. To his surprise, he heard a giant crunch beneath his fist. He choked briefly on his drink as the Bahir roared in agony, crumbling to the ground. As the head of the beast fell, Sam stepped gracefully from its snout onto the ground, the snow crunching beneath his metallic feet. Danger averted, Sam said, blood dripping from his new greatsword. The group decided to harvest what parts of the Bahir they could, retrieving long, sharp teeth from its mouth and carefully carving one of its lightning glands from its throat. It was tedious work, but they were able to collect what they hoped would be a fruitful bounty. Salas knelt to the ground, inspecting the Bahir's gaping eye socket. I kind of want to drink its blood, she mused, swiping her finger into the crimson liquid and giving it a sniff. As she raised her finger to her tongue, the group heard a loud crunch from the distance. What was that? Alora asked, gazing back in the direction they'd come from. It sounded like someone or something was stomping through the snow. Soon, they could hear loud grunting. Quickly, the party darted behind the body of the Bahir, noting how suspect a giant, gutted Bahir would appear in the middle of a snowy plain. Slowly, Salas poked her head from behind the creature, trying to remain concealed. Yep, we've got company, she whispered to the group. Two enormous giant heads emerged from behind the snowdrift, attached to the same set of shoulders. The hideous giant heads conversed briefly as they stared at the corpse of the Bahir before them, eyes growing wide as it made a dim assessment of the carnage. Slowly, the heads lowered back down, and the group could hear them scraping their way back down the embankment. I think one giant monster battle was plenty for the day, Diesa lamented as the sound of footsteps receded into the distance. What should we do? Jory whispered. Alora's eyes traced the snow trailing into the distance. I think there's a path over this way, she said, and started marching off, away from the giants. The group willfully followed. Their boots crunching through the snow, they soon found themselves facing a narrow path along the face of a cliff. Jory gulped, and Copper whined softly as Alora secured a rope around the giant wolf. Drusilla eyed Jory. Feeling brave? she asked, and Jory took a deep swig from his boda bag. Um, no, not, not really, he answered, desperation in his voice. Come on, you just vanquished a Bahir, you've got this, Salas coaxed. Joy reached for his boda bag again, taking several more deep, ungratifying gulps of liquid before creeping out onto the path and slowly inching his way across the trail. It seems... okay, he shouted back to the group, above the howling winds. Beads of cold sweat fell down the side of his face, and his legs trembled. Slowly, the others began to follow, feeling their way across the path with trepidation. No sooner had they reached the center of the pass... Then a rustling permeated through the air. Drusilla was the first to look up. Are those nests? she asked. As the query left her lips, three giant flying creatures soared out from what were indeed nests atop the cliff face. Their bodies and wings looked to be those of a bird of prey, but their heads resembled stags. As they flew down toward the party, the shadows they cast against the cliff face seemed oddly humanoid. The creatures swept downward straight toward Jory. 
The halfling yelped, and Diesa quickly drew her crossbow. Back off! she screamed, releasing an arrow that grazed the beast's shoulder. Drusilla followed suit, and her spirit raven guardians quickly materialized from thin air circling around her. Salas took a moment to evaluate the situation before joining the fray. Instead of trying to damage the ravenous winged beings, she magically cast an audible illusion which replicated the screams of the Bahir they had heard earlier that day. For a moment, the creatures seemed to pause, searching the horizon for the source of the noise. Jory took the moment of pause to grab his darts, throwing several at the flying creatures nearest to him. The three creatures then dove at Jory, their talons tearing into his skin. Jory screamed, nearly losing his balance as he teetered on the edge of the cliff face. As the party desperately continued to attack their pursuers, Sam looked to the cliff face. After a brief computation, he deftly scaled the side of the cliff. When he reached the top, he swung himself over the edge and stood to inspect the enormous nests. Within them were a total of five eggs. Meanwhile, Salas summoned Pip, who telepathically berated her for bringing him into the fray. Oh, look who needs someone to do their dirty work, he complained, tiny wings beating frantically as he rushed toward one of the beasts. He found grip in one of them, talons digging into its side. Through Pip, Salas cast shock and grasp, immediately killing it. The beast spiraled downward, its corpse clashing against the cliff face as it fell. Within moments, it had crashed into the snow beneath them where it lay still. At the top of the cliff, Sam grabbed several of the eggs. His robotic voice rang through the air. How do you like your eggs? he asked, pausing for effect. To his disappointment, neither of the living creatures responded. Safe at home, I presume, he shouted as he tossed two eggs over the side of the cliff. They splattered onto the ground below. The beast screeched agonized by the loss of their two eggs, and quickly rerouted. As they ascended towards Sam, he grabbed another egg from the nest. Sam quickly killed the first of the two beasts, and the other as it continued its ascent. It let loose another piercing screech as it dove at Sam from high in the air. As it collided with him, sparks flew off Sam's body. Below, Elora knocked an arrow, squinting one eye as she followed the movement of the creature with the arrowhead, waiting for the perfect moment. When she released it from her fingertips, it quickly found home in the head of the beast, which fell to its death. Slowly, Sam descended back down the cliff face. The others panted heavily, recovering from the unexpected encounter. Jory took another deep swig from his bag. Uh, that was close, he said. They slowly worked their way across the path to the other side, where they decided to make camp. I have something for you, child, Sam said to Jory. That evening... Joy smiled to himself as he prepared dinner for his friends. Scrambled eggs. Our tale will continue in episode 51. Episode 50 was written by Dominic White, Bethany Powers, and myself, Brian Mesmer. The audio recording of our D&D game sessions that inspired this episode will be available on our podcast channel this Thursday under the name Brunch Club Live. Additional role-playing contributions to the story by Bethany Powers, who plays Deasa, J.P. Black, who plays Drusilla, Liz Richard, who plays Alora, Anna Flemke, who plays Salas, Dominic White, who plays Jory, and Billy Chase, who plays Sam. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us out by sharing it with your friends, and rating and reviewing us on your favorite podcast platform. We really appreciate it. More information about Rescued by Dragons and ways to support and follow us can be found at rescuedbydragons.com. Thank you for listening, and please join me next week to see what my players' choices and the role of the dice have in store. Sam. Good times. Um, I walk over to their eggs. Yeah! <laughs> uh, you still have ten more feet of movement. Egg can smash. I pick up the eggs and throw it at them? You can pick up the two eggs in front of you and throw two eggs. I will do that. Okay. They are improvised weapons, Okay. Um, which you are not proficient in. Nope. So you just add your dex modifier when you roll. Oh, God. Is your throwing egg? Uh, I got a five. Do you want to throw it, say anything amusing as you're chucking eggs <laughs> really uh. badly? <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Shout something. Get their attention. You can roll Killing your, your babies. Um, How about 
How do you like your eggs? <laughs> <laughs> Scramble the eggs. So it doesn't need eggs. <laughs> I guess we'll go with that. We'll go with that. How do you, like, how do you like your eggs? <laughs> Safe and healthy at home, <laughs> presumably. <Yeah. laughs> so just sales past them. Uh, the first one did. Uh... Uh, I'm gonna oh, roll, that? roll that. Roll that again. Okay. Roll that again. Eight. Okay, so you're just chucking <laughs> eggs off his cliff. <laughs> Do they totally see effective. me though? Oh yeah. I mean, so they're babies down. Yeah. 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 So Presumably they get pissed. Um, yeah. As yeah. the first one sails by, you can you hear them kind of look and look up and screech. Angrily, I, I still have on the couple feet of movement, right? Yeah, you do. Can I get close to the other eggs? Yeah, you can walk over to this. Can next I turn. pick them up, or do I have to wait till the next turn? Um, you gotta wait. Okay. Yeah, you're just walking over there. Um, and I can't. Uh, if I do a mass healing spell, could I? Because I got. Could I? No, I can't do cure wounds. Could I send a hand down and cure wounds? No. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I would let you. You're cute. I would let you make a ranged attack as you launch a fist at Joy, and if it hits, it will do damage. But you'll also be able to cast cure wounds. But through. I can't have it crawl down to him. Uh, uh. Or just drop it. No. Okay. No. Fair enough. No. Then that's it. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic, Salas. 